Hi students, today we are going to learn about rate of change. There are two types of rate of change in mathematics. The first one is the average rate of change or the change in y divided by the change in x or simply the gradient between two points. The second one is the instantaneous rate of change. To understand more about these two terms, let's observe these graphs. Look at this following graph. This graph shows the displacement over the time. Suppose that the car moves from a point to the other point. We will find the average velocity of the car. We will use this formula, which is average velocity equals to the change in displacement divided by the change in time. Change in displacement equals to the change in y. Change in time equals to the change in x. So, the average velocity from A to B will be 40 minus 20 divided 4 minus 2 equals 10 meter per second while we have the average velocity from BC equals 60 minus 40 divided by 6 minus 4 equals 10 meter per second remember in this straight line we just calculate the gradient of the line and for all these points we got the same average velocity or the same gradient so in a straight line, we can conclude that we have the constant rate of change. Let's have the other example, which is not a line. We have three points in the curve, A, 2,5, B, 4,20, and C, 6,60. The average velocity from A to B is the gradient between A to B. By the calculation, we have the average velocity of AB is 7.5 meter per second. From B to C, the average velocity will be 20 meter per second. So, in this graph, we have different rate of change. We have known how to calculate the rate of change if we are given two points or more. How about the rate of change at a single point? To answer this question, we have to see this following graph. In this graph, we have been given two points, 4,20, and 6,60. The idea to find the rate of change is coming from the average rate of change. So, suppose that we are going to find the rate of change at a single point which is shown by the arrow 4,20. So, the average rate of change between two points shown in the graph will be 20. Take the other point such that it is getting closer to the intended point. We are looking for the average rate of change between those two points. It gives 19.3. Take the other point so it is getting closer to the intended point. The gradient will be 18. If we take the other point so it is closer and getting closer to the intended point, so we will reach the conclusion that what we are going to find is the gradient of the tangent. In the last lesson, we have known that the gradient of the tangent is actually the derivative of the function. And here we can conclude, the gradient of the tangent is actually the rate of change at a single point. This is what we call as an instantaneous rate of change. Let's have an example. Water is dripping into a bowl from a leaking tap such that the depth h cm of the water in the bowl at a time t seconds is given by h equals square root of 1 plus 2t. Part A. Find the depth of the water when t equals 0 and t equals 4. Part B. Find the rate of change of the depth at t equals 4. To find the depth of the water when t equals 0, we just substitute the value of t equals 0. So h will be square root of 1 plus 2 times 0 equals 1 cm. To find the depth of the water when t equals 4, substitute the value of t equals 4. So h will be 3 cm. Part B. To find the rate of change of the depth, we have to find the derivative of the depth. So we have h is actually square root of 1 plus 2t. Change this into the other form, 1 plus 2t to the power of half. So the h dt will be 1 over 2 times 1 plus 2t to the power minus half times 2 or 1 over square root of 1 plus 2t. So the rate of change of the depth at t equals 4 
is the h dt when t equals 4, so it will be 1 over 3 cm per second. Let's have the other example. The radius of a circular water ripple is increasing at a constant rate of 2 cm per second. Find the rate at which the area of the water ripple is increasing when the radius is 10 cm. We have to deal that R is the radius and A is the area. From the questions, we have that A equals to pi times R square when the water ripple is actually in the circular shape. R equals 10 cm and dr dt is 2 cm per second because we have the word increasing at a constant rate which is the rate of change of radius with respect to t. Now we calculate the rate of change of the area with respect to t which is dA dt. Using the chain rule, dA dt is actually dA dr times dr dt. According to the function a equals to pi r square we have that the derivative of a with respect to r will be 2pr when we have in the question the rdt equals 2 cm per second so substitute these values will give 2pr times 2 which is 2p times 10 times 2 and we have 40 pi cm square per second or 125.6 cm square per second This is the other example. A plastic cup is in the shape of an inverted circular cone of base radius 6 cm and height 15 cm. Water is poured into it at a constant rate of 4 cm3 per second. Find the rate of change of the radius of the water surface when the depth of the water is 9 cm. Let's draw an inverted circular cone of base radius 6 cm and height 50 cm. So A and B are the points representing the base of the cone. C and D are the points representing the circle of the water poured into the cone. And T is the vertex of the cone. Radius is 6 cm and the height is 15 cm. For the radius of the water is R and the depth of the water is H. This is the symbol. V stands for the volume. As we know that the volume of the cone is 1 over 3 times pr square times h. h equals 9 cm from the question. And we have also the constant rate of 4 cm cube per second is representing the rate of change of the volume with respect to t. So take point m as the center of the water and n as the center of the base of the cone. Now, using the similarity, we have that the triangle TMD and the triangle TNB are similar each other. So, R over 6 equals H over 15. And from here we got H equals 15 R over 6. Because V equals 1 over 3 pi R square H. So, we substitute the value of H here. So, we'll have V equals 5 pi over 6 r cube. Using the chain rule, dv dt equals to dv dr times dr dt. Now because we have v as the function of r, dv dr will be the derivative of 5 pi over 6 r cube or 5 pi over 2 r square. In the question we have gotten that dv dt equals 4 cm cube per second. Now again using the chain rule, dv dt equals dv dr times dr dt. Substituting all the values will give 4 equals 5 pi over 2 r square times dr dt. Now we are looking for r. Looking back, we have r over 6 equals h over 15. And in the question we have h equals 9 cm. So we got r equals 18 over 5. Substituting the value of r will give this result or 4 equals 324 pi over 10 times dr dt. Now dr dt equals 10 over 81 pi. Simplifying this will give the result 0.0393 cm per second. To make you understand more about this topic, please practice to the assignment I have given to you and submit it on time in a model. See you.